Hi everyone, this is Cherry Enchantress, and this is your Daily Dust for Wednesday, October 25th, if you're watching in real time, but it can also be for whenever you stumble upon it. It's also a timeless reading, especially with this deck. It's sort of a timeless, any time of the year deck, but I chose it for our Halloween countdown because it has sort of a, a nice, kind of a darker energy, a little bit darker, it features the energy for the second half of the year. So you'll see Samhain and Yule, but you won't see too much of the spring energy. And um, it, it's very honest and matter of fact, and it has some really nice advice and spells and things. So let's take a look at the Enchanted Oracle. Also, I bought this at a horror convention. It was actually... Um, a convention that was was helping to find cure for kids with cancer so I thought it was a good cause and it was a really fun adventure <laughs> all right and so that's the book and the book is great it's it's really really well word the the author does a great job of explaining and sending a message all right let's see what we get I'm gonna shuffle it and get a three card collective message. It's my very first oracle too. My very first oracle. The very first one I ever used on this channel. The fir first oracle I've ever bought in fact. And I was like 48 when I bought it. <laughs> but I had only used the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. I really didn't know much about oracles until I got involved with this channel. And well, right before I got involved with the channel, because I, I started watching other YouTube channels having to do with tarot and oracle, and then I thought, ooh, oracles, neat. <laughs> All right, let's see what we get. We have Nemesis. I was hoping she came out. Normally, I don't like Nemesis, but I think Nemesis is a good good thing that to face. It's like facing this fear or this energy. Sometimes we just have to. See what else and tattered dreams okay i don't like that one too much <laughs> uh let's see what else and shadow weaver see so a little bit of darker energy we have dragon type wings and um but i'm i'm ready to dive in i need to know sometimes we just need to know sat shadow messages so let's zoom on in and see what we get so oh sorry <laughs> Almost every spiritual path, so we're talking with Nemesis. Almost every spiritual path and every political system incorporates the notion of justice. Whatever you do has consequences. If you put out negative energy, you draw negative energy to you. It's like that saying, you've made your bed, now you have to sleep in it. You reap what you sow. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's karmic payback time. We've heard those, right? Luckily, though, this also works both ways. So if you express positive energy, you will attract positive energy. In this way, your past actions have created your present. And you are, with every action, creating your future. This is a law of the universe. It lays the burden of responsibility for your own life firmly at your feet. It also removes a burden of responsibility. You don't need to concern yourself with making someone else pay for their wrongs. The universe doesn't need your help. <laughs> Understanding this will help you focus on and assess your own choices. Paying attention to the ramifications of your own decisions empowers you to create the kind of future you want. The Greek goddess Nemesis reflects that society's values and is concerned with divine retribution, punishing pride and unwarranted success. Here, our nemesis focuses broader. She represents a more universal type of balance and is better understood as karma. Hence, the etching on her sword and tattoo near her eye. I wonder if you can see that. Zoom on in and see that etching near her eye and on her sword. <sighs> 
And uh, that is the kanji symbol for karma. She doesn't seek merely to right wrongs and punish. Rather, she bestows whatever has been earned, both good and bad. She is a complete and pure expression of justice. Like the Greek image, she is winged. And some myths, she is associated with geese or swans. And so she holds a feather in her hand. She stands before an ancient pagan symbol of justice. She draws her motivation from a sense of justice. She sees where justice needs to be applied, and she actively applies justice. So whatever you're facing now, positive or negative, is a result of past actions. There's likely no avoiding it. If positive, enjoy it. If negative, assess the decisions and behavior that may have brought you to this point. Learn from this experience. Also, since you are at this moment laying the groundwork for your future, consider carefully how you react to the situation. Your reactions bring about more of the same, or are you going, will your reactions bring more of the same, or are you going to go in a positive direction? Uh, it's interesting when I first learned about, when I first learned about karma, it hit me hard, because being a Scorpio, we tend to seek revenge, and so it was the very first lesson I had to learn to control about my nature, to not re overreact or not seek some kind of justice in me. And then I have my Libra rising and a Libra stellium in the 12th house. So this need for justice and to ro right wrongs is very strong inside me. <laughs> and so I have to, I've ha always had to learn not to take it on myself that a higher power will handle this and everyone has a path right everyone's life is their own path and they're they are in tune with their own karma and we are in tune with ours and of course i learned that and my first knowledge of karma had to do with past life and and whatever you bring over and this and, and things like that and current life too you can have instant karma and whatever you do in this life can come back at you the third thing i learned about karma which i always seem to try to remember <laughs> whenever something comes up is whenever you have some kind of challenge and you see it as a karmic situation as see it as a karmic obstacle or some kind of challenge the the key is not what it what's happening to you it's the key is how you react to it and so when hard things happen to you in life if you if you go move through it with grace and ease and um, understanding and wisdom and calm and acceptance and it's just about re receiving these energies with grace finding finding the silver lining um, trying to learn from this at uh, the lesson that needs to be learned all of those beautiful energies if you're able to tap into that through the difficult times then you're definitely going to you know pave a much easier way for yourself but if you're constantly butting heads against this difficult energy that's being uh, put towards you or that you think is being put towards you then you're going to keep constantly feeling this like the world is against you and that you're still you're always struggling against something so so yeah i mean it, it, i'm not saying my sparkles of life light are way over that <laughs> you guys have got this figured out and i feel like probably a lot of you are coming into a cycle of karmic reward and you're attracting these good things but the tattered d dreams does show that there are going to be downs. There's ups and there's downs. And and how do you deal with those low moments? Even when you're in a positive person and you're in, in a positive cycle of doing good and being kind and, and doing the right thing. And it's hard because when you do the right thing and you're a good person, you feel like you should keep getting rewarded for that. And still sometimes bad things do happen. So how do we how do we deal with that so here we have the spinning wheel much like in sleeping beauty we think of spinning tales as storytelling so also spinning <laughs> it's a it's a word that's used a lot nowadays spinning there they put a spin on that one and yet we do spin more than stories 
We each spin our beliefs and experiences into threads and webs that shape the way we look at the world and how we operate within it. We spin such delicate things as ideas, philosophies, faith, and hope. We believe that we've made it, made something strong, so strong that we use it as the foundation of our life. It becomes the base from which we operate, by which we make our decisions. Even simple everyday actions and expectations spring from these fragile webs. You call someone and make plans to meet at a certain time. You expect that person to be there. Why? Well, your web of experience and beliefs about people saying that they mean what they mean to tell you, you know, what they say is what they're going to do, right? And so beliefs and expectations certainly shape larger things, such as our hopes and our dreams. Based on what you believe, you think um, that if you work hard and achieve goals, you will get that promotion. If you do work hard, achieve all your goals, and don't get the promotion, how does that affect your web of belief? So that was kind of what I was talking about, right? Here we see a fairy who is surrounded by ruined webs and threads. Something happened and everything she's worked on has been affected in some way. Even her powerful wings, which could normally take her up to great heights, are tattered and weakened. Her gloves, which cover her arms, are torn, indicating that whatever she does now is somehow lessened as a result. In her right hand, she holds a rune with the symbol of Mars on it. Mars is a powerful planet that brings energy both to destroy and to rebuild, and on her left hand perches a butterfly, a tiny but potent sign of renewal and rebirth. And I heard this phrase in my head as I was reading, God's will, not thy will, not thy will, but God's will. And sometimes we get upset when we want our way so bad and it doesn't happen. And we've put so much energy into the way we want it to happen. We don't allow enough room to let the universe decide or put their influence in, in the situation. We are co-creators, you know. Most of it we're doing on our own, but we cannot ignore the fact that we're creating with spirit to bring about these amazing things in our lives. And spirit always, our higher self always knows best. Just think about it that way. Think about it as yourself, as as an entity that has a higher self or think of it as your future self like like say you're five down five years down the line that person knows way more than this person right now and wouldn't you want to put your faith and trust in your five years from now person who's seen it and see, saw everything that happened and realized the places you could have just avoid it altogether, the places you had to go through, you know, um, and, and that higher self or the future self is guiding you too. It's part of your team, your co-creation team. <laughs> and so the Oracle message here is that if you believed in something and you counted on it and it unraveled, it can, it feels like be your belief just is not true anymore and that you were proven false and an outcome has fallen short of the expectation whatever has happened it had reverberating her effects in your world and it's the foundation that has been shaken and everything on it has fallen and sometimes it's really really distressing and it's you know even even you know nothing we can do about it sometimes it just happens it's um fortunate though when the wheels that create dreams do keep spinning in spite of tragedies and the same may just that thing that destroys something also can provide the energy to rebuild and in the midst of tattered dreams there's always a butterfly that will give you hope and only you need to look up and see it all right so the shadow weaver shadow weaver is very interesting it, it to me it's just about you diving in a little bit deeper and seeing the truth of the matter like is this big or is this small is this your will or higher will is this something that you can you can move through quickly or is it something that you can release is this a minor thing or what do you need to learn from it 
When was the last time you felt powerful and in control of your life? Isn't that a great feeling? <laughs> There can be tons going on, but you've got every ball in the air. I feel like that's why people sometimes fight for control so much because it feels good. It's the feeling of power feels, makes you feel invincible. And when everything's going your way and every everything's falling into place the way you imagined it, it does make you feel good. Like you did this, you know, sometimes it, it makes you get so heady, so into your head that you forget to thank God for for the universal assistance here. You know, you feel like you did it all on your own. So you kind of, a pride kind of overcomes you sometimes. But there's tons that go on. It's like when this happens, sometimes there's like a bunch of balls in the air and everything is in order and everything is moving forward in the exact dire direction you want it to go. And they're sometimes really rare for us, but they do feel good. And then there are times we can just seem to motivate, be motivated and properly handle even one thing, let alone several. Or we might have so much going on that we feel overwhelmed, throw up our hands, and just let everything go. And those times definitely do not feel so great. Whatever the situation we face, we can know that really we really do have the ability to handle and handle well everything it may not be particularly fun also hear the phrase god doesn't give us anything that we can't handle they're corny but i mean they're true i think there may be other things we'd rather do but if we control our focus and see it through afterwards the sense of exhilaration and pride will make up for it the Shadow Weaver is clearly a powerful creature. She is surrounded by chaotic forces, stirred up by a black and white dragon. She strides strongly and confidently forward, subduing and calming them as she passes. Her red bodice and crescent moon indicate her power, power that she knows is hers deep in her gut and wholly understands in her mind. She wears a choker adorned with a yin-yang symbol. Let's take a look at that. Oh yeah, as you see it. That beautiful balance that we have within us and we share with sometimes a special other. And um, and and the this is showing her ability to balance a variety of energies. And in her hand she carries a black beetle and a white butterfly. Do you see that? <laughs> black beetle and white butterfly i love the symbols in this it's 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 like she gives the same kind of energy to the symbols as the tarot the rider Waite smith tarot gives energy to to the symbols in in that in their in the drawings and those drawings so it's just really cool and so um She has she has different symbols that show this opposing energies and being able to use them as she wishes. So there's something or several or even many things going on in your life. And you might be feeling overwhelmed. Maybe your life appears out of control. Or maybe it's just one project that you can't get a grip on. Maybe this is just part of a, a, a step that caused you to fluster and make you feel like you're ready to give up. But don't. It's just a stepping stone. Big picture. Your higher self, your future self is saying, oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about that. That's small in comparison to everything else. And... It's going to be okay, you know. So maybe it's just, you know, just a little thing. But it, in the moment, it feels so much bigger. Whatever the case is, this card is here to tell you that letting things fall apart or letting things slide, well, that's just an option. That's not an option right now. Don't, don't just let it all crumble down because of one little feeling and it may be it may be a, a, a false impression on something too 
there are times when it's okay and no harm is done, but now it's your in your best interest to tap into your deepest, strongest organizational and get it done power and use them. So I feel like that's your higher self talking. Now is the time not to let it all fall apart. Get a grip, <laughs> get her done, and you know, carry on. So you as the shadow weaver, when this card comes up, you have no idea where you are going to find that energy. Use this visualization to help you tap into it. It can also suggest practical advice on how to approach approach tasks tasks at hand. So I'm going to give you a little visualization exercise, maybe. Or if you want this visualization exercise, just send me an email. But there's all kinds of ways to quietly focus and center your mind. So, so the task at hand is not so overwhelming, if that applies. Because some of you, I don't feel like it's necessarily an overwhelming task. It could be quite the opposite. It could be that, that your karma, you're having a karmic reward you've been through the tattered dreams moment you've been through the difficult times but but you're spinning this to your favor and you're going to come out on top and you're going to be a winner <laughs> and you're going to feel pride and excitement for what you've done so really focus on the positive energy because the first card the nemesis is telling you put out there what you want to receive back and see yourself as achieving and being full of 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 goal oriented achievements you know i'm doing it i'm doing it i'm making it i'm triumphant i'm victorious i can do this right keep seeing that for yourself and attract that all right i hope you like that faith justin pixie does <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha